welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. Coming up, we take a look at seven really cool knives on loan to me, uh, a new hinderer in my collection. Yes, that's right. And SOG shows off their 2022 lineup, which is kind of interesting. I got to say, you know, SOG, uh, I'm hot and cold with the SOG, but uh, what they have coming up, some of it looks pretty cool. I got to say, I must admit. All right. So here we are at the uh, beginning of the show, my opportunity to show off a knife to you all and uh, talk at length about that knife and uh, its significance in my life for that day. And today we have a significant one. Uh, I am just uh, getting back from a trip. I am road weary, if you will. And of course, you know that when I road trip, I carry this right here. This is my SOCOM Elite from Microtech. This was my very first knife in S35VN. It was also my very first uh, folding knife with a glass breaker. So this comes, it's tradition if you will. It comes on every road trip with me. For a while, uh, the throne, it was usurped shortly with the uh, with the Bastinelli Dragotac, the small one, because that had a nice glass breaker on it too. Actually, I like it even better than this glass breaker. But that knife did not make the cut, as they say on Forged in Fire, and I sold it for something else. Actually, I gave that away to a Bastinelli collecting friend of mine, <clears throat> Ian, whom you know. Anyway, so I was carrying this pretty much all weekend because it was a long travel weekend and it was a road trip. Of course, the glass breaker is, you know, in case we're on some country road and the car gets rolled, of course, not by me or my wife because we're both outstanding drivers, but some mama Luke out there runs us off the road and we have to break ourselves out. I like knowing that I have a glass breaker in my pocket. And this four inches of S35VN in the coolest Tanto grind that I believe Microtech has ever done, this pre-2015 or so uh, grind, I love it. I love it. So this is my travel knife, my road trip knife. And uh, we came back today. So here it is. I was carrying this. And actually, interesting, interesting thing to talk about because um, I totally botched my entire... Uh, travel knife setup. You know, usually when I travel, it's 24 hours on my mind a little. I know, I know, but at least a little bit uh, on my mind. What am I going to bring on this trip? You know, I don't want to overdo it like I used to do, but just bring the most effective in their categories. But the categories are many. So I always end up bringing many knives. This time I was like, not doing it. I, I didn't have time, you know, got out of work. We got to have to get ready to go. And we went. So I messed it up. Of course, I had to have the road trip knife, so I had that, right? And then I was like, I'm going to make this a one wife, a uh, one wife, one knife weekend. Um, it was also a one wife weekend, which is all weekends. Okay, uh, so I took the one knife, and that was the SOCOM Elite. And it just so happens in my backpack, I had several other knives. I had the Perpetua uh, right here, which I should have been carrying. I had the Delica serrated because. Uh, one is none. And I had uh, this just by chance, the Emerson Sachs. I kind of forgot about all of these knives and that they happened to be in my bag, my backpack this whole weekend. So when we weren't going to the theme park that we were going to, which did not allow knives, and I was completely disarmed, something wrong about that, right? A disarmed American. But I also... Uh, you know, so I would leave the hotel without a knife two days in a row. And the first day we go to a um, a pancake place because this place we were at uh, is known for its pancake houses like everywhere. And luckily, before we left, I was like, I cannot leave this hotel room without a knife, period. I mean, that cannot, I'll leave it in the car, but just for now, I'll drop this in my pocket. And then when we get to the fun park, I'll take it out. And this, of course, is... A, uh, it's a little Victorinox fruit knife that I uh, heat bent and wrapped with cord and did the little finger notch and turned into a little cheap pickle kind of throwaway knife. 
do you work with it and throw it down the sewer grid? You know what I mean? Uh, and I made myself this little uh, Kydex sheath for it. It's a cute little package. Uh, so I brought this with me. And luckily, luckily, I had this with me. Because let me tell you something. <clears throat> Those of you out there who are pancake fans, I am not. I always tend towards the savory at breakfast, but my daughters love the pancakes and such. So uh, I don't know if you know this, but it's very hard to cut a soft, spongy pancake with one of those uh, quote unquote serrated, stamped out, cheap as it could possibly be uh, pieces of silverware. Uh, in this case, they call it a knife. Uh, it, it, it's like you may as well pick up a a pen off the floor and try and cut it. So my daughter's like, uh, dad, uh, uh, you know, do you have, so I didn't even have the fruit knife with me, uh, this morning at this waffle house. And so I gave her the SOCOM elite and, uh, she did a wonderful job cutting up that, uh, cutting up that waffle, which is not, you know, unless you have something very thin and very, very slicey and sharp, a waffle is, is not, it's not a very forgiving material. It moves under the blade, you know, oh, it, it, it's soft and it and it gave. So I was very proud of Eden. Uh, she she cut this thing up. She did a great job using that secondary edge towards the tip. This is a long tipped tanto, if you will. She did a great job of using that. I applaud her. Uh, and then she was, of course, mortified when she found out I was taking pictures because she's at that age. You know, it used to be all she wanted was take a picture of me right now doing this. Now it's just like, you know, so, but anyway, uh, the SOCOM elite did in a pinch. All right. Uh, but the first time, you know, when I had this, the uh, fruit knife, it was nice, thin, slicey. I was able to cut everyone's pancakes up. And I know you're like, really, you're cutting up your daughter's pancakes. Well, I have a six year old daughter and she definitely needs it. And then, you know, Eden's good with a knife, but man, no one is good with one of those cheap stamp knives. So uh, let's just all be very grateful for uh, this SOCOM Elite and the job it did. A true travel knife, indeed. Uh, however, next time, I am not going to forget to bring a slip joint like this. Like, this is a proper food knife. This is a proper going out to dinner knife. Uh, you know, if it's still in your tux pocket the next morning, it's great for breakfast, too. Uh, but it's just an old number. Uh, what is this? 60? Well, this is the... It's a GEC. I can never, I think it's a 65 uh, in, in uh, uh, tortoiseshell. Anyway, like I said, we're uh, road weary, but I'm glad that, uh, you know, I was able to make do with the knives I brought. But next time, man, I was a little bit ashamed. I was like, huh, I could have made a whole show about all the great knives I brought, but instead I botched it. We made it through though. You know, that's what we do. Uh, so coming up next Thursday night. Uh, it's Thursday night knives on the 21st of October. By the way, I love October. I love it. Probably one of my favorite months because, um, you know, I grew up in Northeast Ohio and I went to college in Northeastern America, you know, where it looks like this in the autumn, all the trees are orange and yellow and red. It's beautiful. I, I love this time of year. Uh, uh, but anyway, so next October 21st, uh, next Thursday, October 21st, we are doing a Gentleman Junkie knife giveaway. And if you are brand new to this, uh, Gentleman Junkie is our highest level of support on Patreon. We have the Gentleman Junkies at $10 a month, the Tactical Junkies at $5 a month, and the Traditional Junkies at $3 a month. And we appreciate all of you and you get stickers and you get uh, insider, uh, not insider, that sounds so cheesy. Uh, you get extras from the interviews. Every interview we do every week, we do a little bit extra and that's available to patrons and they can be colorful slices of conversation, I do assure you. But also, if you're a gentleman junkie, uh, every month on Thursday Night Knives, on the third Thursday of the month, uh, this month it's the 21st, we do a monthly knife giveaway. Uh, Jim puts all the names of the gentleman junkies on a random wheel. We spin it. It's uh, random.com or something like that. We spin that wheel and boom, uh, it selects a random person and that person gets whatever knife it is. Uh, that month. We've given away a lot of cool ones, I have to say. Uh, this month, we're going to be giving away another cool one, a Finch. I love Finch knives. And uh, the guys at Finch knives are great too. They design really, really great knives and, and have them built awesomely, if that's a word. Uh, so this is what you're going to get. You're going to get a uh, 
This is mine, but you will be getting a black and green Finch Devil's Finger. Uh, it comes with a warranty card, a Band-Aid, classy little bit of kit, in case you cut yourself on that razor sharp knife, a cool sticker. Every single knife has its own design and its own cool sticker. They're all kind of retro in feel. Really like this one. Uh, and then you get the knife in a nice velveteen um, fitted foam case. Pull that out. And then this is the knife. This is mine. It's a little schmutzig. I, I forgot to clean it. Sorry. Uh, but it, it is definitely a user. This is a great user knife. Um, this is the uh, Devil's Finger. And as you can see, it's a near spear point blade. Uh, saber ground there. This is 154 cm steel, probably my favorite user everyday steel. I do love 154 cm. It's got a nice wire clip, gorgeous textured, um, uh, and by that I mean unpolished uh, micarta, canvas micarta. So you see that big thick canvas weave. Feels great in hand. Caged ceramic bearings in that pivot and just an awesome knife. One of the things I love about the Finch knives are these little, very subtle uh, flipper tabs they use. You see it right there, and you see the jimping on there. It acts as a nice little finger ramp. So instead of a choil, you can have your finger placed there and grip between the jimping on the top with your thumb and the jimping on the bottom with your forefinger and get a really great cut. Uh, instead of having a choil and losing some of that cutting edge. I really like how they do that. Uh, so this um, is going to be the knife of the of October 2021 Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway. It will be the black blade with the dark green. Oh, so beautiful canvas, Micarta. I really love that version. I think everyone does. And I also love this happy, cheery, uh, red micarta. I've really gotten into maroon and red as a handle color and never thought I would, but I don't know. It was the, the wine color, that Bordeaux color, sort of my, my gateway into red handled knives. So uh, that I just wanted to show that off. That's next week. So you still have time to become a gentleman junkie. Just go to the knife junkie.com uh, slash Patreon, sign up there. You can become a, like I said, a traditional junkie at $3 a month, a tactical junkie at five or a, or a gentleman junkie at 10. And let me just say this, uh, you get the same thing with all of those levels, except it, it, in the $10 level, you get entered into the monthly drawing for a free knife. So that's a great little perk. Uh, if you can, if you can do it, do it. If you want to do it, do it. Uh, otherwise, thanks for watching the show. That's really what it is. But altogether, just go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon uh, to sign up for one of these uh, things. Uh, that's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. So if you've detected a layer of stank in my voice when I mention SOG knives, it's not because, um, it, it's only because I didn't like where they went for a short period of time. They have righted the ship and are making really cool things. I, I, I feel like earlier today I said SOG knives, like they have a, some cool new knives and I, I almost acted surprised. And in a way I was, but I'll explain that in just a second. But just to assure you all how much I do love SOG knives, this SOG, this seal pup knife here is with me every single day. This is my fixed blade knife that I carry in my backpack, my EDC, you know, carry everywhere backpack. And uh, it's a it's a five inch OS 8 blade. It's, it's really nicely ground. It's thin, it's hollow ground. It's a stout blade, and actually, seals actually do use these, is, is what I've heard. Uh, you know, or it's one of the knives they get in, in their kit, or at least at one point it was. So just because it's not a super duper steel, or more a super steel, uh, doesn't mean it's not a capable knife, and doesn't mean it's not a timeless and awesome 
design. And uh, I feel SOG uh, has a bit of a corner on the market uh, for that, and they ignored it for a while. And that is because they have this SOG Bowie design, that double peaked, uh, beautifully upswept clip point blade. I mean, it's stunning and it's and it's immediately recognizable. And I feel like for a while they turned their back on it and its awesomeness and maybe the spirit that drove it uh, and, you know, went astray. We all know how. Uh, but the past five years or so, they have come back and come back very nicely. And I have to say, um, I like their combination of rehashing classic designs like the Aegis and the Seal XR. Uh, and well, that was that's a new one actually. Uh, but you know the the classic designs. They've come back with new ones for 2022, and a lot of them are in the same spirit. And this this uh, this one right here, this first one that they're showing, is definitely uh, kind of a chief among them. Uh, you just look at it. It's optimized for EDC. It's a 3.1 inch blade. It's S35 VN. It's called the one zero by the way. And that's a stippled aluminum handle, which I love. I love aluminum. Uh, we just because titanium exists doesn't mean that aluminum doesn't. And aluminum has some, some qualities, especially in lightness. I think that titanium doesn't quite have. And if we are not pushing the limits of the materials of our knives to their to their maximums, then what's the difference really? Uh, feel, um, look, yes, for sure, and we know that's important to me. But I love the look of aluminum. Anyway, this new Zero XR is kind of a, a champion for what they're coming out with now because this thing, if you look at it, you see that sort of XR lock. They're coming out with this in two different styles, and they're doing this with a number of different knives in 2022. This new 1.0 design is coming out in the XR model, uh, which is the, ah, I meant to have an XR lock with me, but it's this sort of uh, axis lock style thing. But they're also coming out with an AU version. The AU version uh, stands for automatic. And so every, and those are gonna be completely American made, the automatics. Um, so we have this, this uh, zero, um, one zero, I'm sorry, coming out in automatic and coming out in XR, uh, one zero, I think it's like ones and zeros maybe, I don't know, at 3.9 ounces. And then this next one, uh, as Jim scrolls, is very reminiscent of the reboot of the Aegis. And I really like the looks of this one. Um, and so so this is another uh, example, uh, this Alt Altair, it's called. Another example where they're making an FX version, or a, a, a um, and uh, two different versions. One of them here is an XR version. And then instead of going the other direction and going auto, they're making this a fixed blade. And so they're now calling their fixed blade knives the FX knives, FX series, AU series, and XR series. So I like that because um, we sort of understand where we stand with each knife. If you see, oh, the Altair, that comes in the XR and the FX. That means, oh, okay, so no automatic there, but we have these two different iterations. I like I like that. I mean, if we have to go with all these uh, letter designations, I like the way they're doing it here, uh, unlike some places that just are still on the numbers. Now, when I go down to the bottom, I see that they're coming out with a Recondo FX. Uh, and maybe you are a fan of, of the old school SOGs like I am. To me, I think SOG, I still think that Bowie shape. I still think this beautiful fixed blade. This is their Bowie. Uh, this is their XL model Bowie. And it's, it's a uh, slightly larger than the classic one, but it's got the, uh, the, um, what do you call this leather stacked handle? It's just a classic. It's got the metal. Uh, Quillions and the whole thing. It's a classic. This is what I always think of when I think of SOG. So they have something coming out called the Recondo. They used to have a Recondo in this style right here uh, that had uh, that had a swept blade, but it had the stacked handle. It was more of a combat style knife with the seven inch blade and that whole thing. This new Recondo is a small uh, kind of four and a half inch fixed blade knife. Uh, I haven't seen pictures of it yet, so I'm curious, curious to find out what this is going to look like. Uh, hopefully, they do something where they're reaching back to their roots. I mean, 
I know that SOG is rebranding themselves as a modern EDC. I, I think that SOG at some point would love to be like, uh, you know, a, 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 um, a pedestrian, more pedestrian James brand or a quiet carry or something like that. That's just the feeling I get. Uh, but they're, they're kind of edging in that way. Um, I know you're listening. You're saying not even close yet, Bob. Well, I'm, I'm not saying I'm, I'm saying more an attitude and market that they're, that they're looking to, to touch. So I'm not sure if they're going to take it back this way, but they used to have a whole line of this style of knife, uh, of knife, fixed blade combat knife, beautiful classic based on classic designs and then riffing on them and modernizing them like the desert war. You know, they got, uh, they got rid of a lot of really great, uh, the, the double agent or not the double agent, the agent, whatever that was, that was a great knife, man. So I really do hope that saw goes back to its roots, at least in one, uh, bit of its market, you know, in, in one bit of its, uh, uh, business to those old school fixed blade knives, but that's probably not what's really their bread and butter. It's probably not anyone's bread and butter too much these days because everyone can carry a pocket knife every day. So I get it, but just speaking strictly aesthetically, that's where I hope they go. Anyway, check out the new, uh, SOG. 2022 catalog they're the first uh one of the first uh companies out there to to be coming back out with it or to be coming out with their 2022 catalog i think it had something to do with the timing west coast blade show um which i've, I've been jealous jealously jealously looking at pictures of um so anyway all right still to come on this here podcast, we're going to look at seven really cool knives on loan to me that I, a couple I really wish I were mine, but they're, they're not. Uh, and then we're going to take a look at the new Hinderer Eclipse Tanto in my collection. Thanks for what? Have a knife you want featured or reviewed? Call the Knife Junkies 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and let us know. So earlier today, I was... <laughs> about 20 minutes ago, I was talking about this long fronted American Tanto. And what I meant by that, this is the SOCOM elite. If you forgot what I meant by that is this forward portion of the Tanto is very long from, from the secondary tip to the, uh, to the tip tip. Uh, there is a long distance. It's like, uh, it's like this forward portion starts further back. And so it gives you a more, uh, gradual approach as the blade widens, unlike, unlike, uh, don't have it on me. Unlike say the, uh, the, uh, Sabenza or, or one of the Chris Reeve knives tantos, it's much more abrupt. This is a nice long lingering tanto. Well, I just traded my Medford, a big beefy, almost ridiculous tanto. I mean, I did love that knife, but I never, ever carried it. And I wanted something new that I would carry. So I traded it for this and some extra hardware, but for this, the Hinderer Eclipse, also a Tanto, also in this case, a long pointed Tanto. If you look, they have similar, um, the SOCOM Elite and the Eclipse Tanto have similar long front portions there. And uh, I'm getting to learn, excuse me, why that's useful. And it is in many ways. And I have to say, if you have to cut a waffle with a Tanto, I, th I think one of these is the way to go because that long front portion is what makes the most contact with the plate, though it should never make too much contact with the plate. But when it does, it should be exactly parallel. And that way you'll get the best cut. You'll also be able to drag this uh, main straight cutting edge through the body of said waffle and do some pre-cutting. And uh, so, yeah, uh, this I have not cut waffles with. I have not cut much with this. I've had this for only a few days, uh, but it really scratched an itch to replace that awesome Medford Praetorian uh, Tanto with a Tanto uh, of equal equal or, or similar value and build and, and all of that. And this really, this really nailed it. I got to say, I am loving the eclipse ergonomics man does it feel good in hand with this big dip here between the very peak of the forward thumb ramp and uh and then the peak of the handle here before it dips in here just a really great place 
to put your thumb, whether it's back here or forward here. Of course, there's a swale right there. You can come very far forward if you need to. Uh, I've always said that if you're going to have more than one finger groove or finger choil, it should be two and no more. And uh, oftentimes I've had good success with the two finger choil, like the Recon one. Uh, there are plenty of others, but this one, it works great on too. This is just a really, really nice handle to grip ergonomically. Uh, like I said, you got those two nice generous finger choils. You have a nice sort of flat run here for the rest of your fingers and nice jimping there. I do like the jimping. This is also excellent in reverse grip. Everything lines up and this is a nice place to put your thumb I gotta say, I don't like the pointy, the pointy pommels for reverse grip. So this is this is an S35 VN. So this is an older one, and it does not have the triway pivot. It has the traditional pivot. I give it a little bit of wrist. It sometimes it doesn't need it. You can preload, but you know, if you gotta be thinking that hard about it, just give it some wrist. You'll you'll make it through. Okay. So here here it is without any wrist preloaded, ah, sorry, works fine. Here it is with very little effort and a little wrist, just fine. So, I mean, you know, use your wrist if you have to, it's not a huge deal, but I get it. I get it as a, uh, as a measure of how much of a flipper a flipper is and hinderer kind of really keyed into, well, if we're putting a flipper on it, we should make it flip. And they keyed into that with the triway pivot and all of that. And I have one triway pivot knife. I love it. I've never uh, swapped out. One thing I can't quite get my mind around, though, is how do they get the Teflon washers, the brass washers, and then the captured bearings washer, like exactly the same? Is there any play? Has anyone actually switched out and gotten rid of the bearings? on their triway pivot and put the bronze on or the nylon. How is it? Is there any play? Is there any difficulty in dialing in the action? I am curious about that for that very reason. Uh, so let me know. But anyway, this knife is just gorgeous, has all of the hallmarks of a uh, hinderer knife with the beautiful titanium side, the, the, uh, the filler tab and just all the gorgeous hardware. And then the gentleman I got this from, had swapped out the uh, the regular um, titanium hardware for bronze anodized hardware. So just a really nice knife. I'm psyched to have it. I'm really excited to have five hinderers in my hinderer collection now. I'm going to show two of them. Here it is with an XM18. Uh, yes, I used wrist to get that blade out just a little. Hope you don't mind. Uh, and they're about the same size. I think the camera angle is making the Eclipse look slightly larger. Uh, they're about the same size. And then here it is with an XM18, or 24, I'm sorry, XM24 Warncliffe. Best action on any of my hinderers, including my triway pivot. And this is just a nylon you know, washer setup. I think it's the size and shape and weight of that blade just has always been a good flipper. Even when I took it apart and swapped out the uh, the scales. Excellent, excellent. So you can see, man, uh, you can see how this uh, 24 still dwarfs the the 18 and the, and the Eclipse. Hmm. I just like gazing at their beauty. Awesome knives. Rick Hinderer, thank you. Rick Hinderer, answer my phone calls, Rick Hinderer. I want you on my show. I would love to talk to Rick Hinderer about uh, not only his awesome knives, but the innovation he's done and what it's been like spending all this time working on titanium frame lock knives and kind of uh, helping elevate the entire, the entire scene. I just love his work. So there you go. Any of you listeners out there know Rick Hinderer personally? Hook us up. Okay, so next, seven cool knives on loan. Now, these are knives that I've had for a couple of weeks now. You've seen a few of them, uh, but I wanted to get them all in one place because I'm not crazy about doing um, compilation videos or, or videos in which I show a whole bunch of disparate knives uh, as tabletops. Uh, but 
but just so that I can get these all out and then I can slowly wend my way through the rest of these. And to the people who own these knives, I will get them back to you, uh, of course. They're on loan from Dave, This Old Sword Blade Reviews. Got to check out This Old Sword Blade Reviews. Also, Blade Freak gave me one of them. And uh, Lefty EDC, thank you, sir. And then uh, the last one I show is on loan from Jake at Bearded Gear. But let's show the first one. This first one is the We Knife, We Knives Roman. The Roman. Now, this is kind of an unsung hero, if you will. And, uh, well, is it a hero? It could be. Uh, I think it is an exceptionally cool knife. Now, it has some inspiration behind it that really resonates with me. Um, let me let me show you this first, though. If you look, you can see it's got a um, uh, an extended tab here. It looks almost like a friction folder, but what it is is it's it's for opening. It's a front flipper. It's an inline flipper, if you will. Um, but this is designed by Alessandra DeSantis, a, a female Italian uh, who designs really cool tactical knives. And uh, I like her spirit, and I, I like this knife. Uh, this is from her website. It is inspired by the traditional knife of the Eternal City, Rome, that at the time of the Papal States was the weapon of the folk. So the folk carried these. A traditional knife that was... Uh, the protagonist of many bloody duels between the 1600s and the 1900s. Uh, so this is something that was carried to be used in, well, in conflict. And I don't know how many Italians, you know, we're great people. Sometimes, uh, sometimes our temper gets away with us. Me, I've learned to manage mine uh, because I live with a Latin woman and uh, without managing my temper, man, this place would be, it would, <laughs> it'd be Ragnarok. Uh, so, uh, just kidding, baby. Uh, but so this is what Italians in Rome or a lot of Italians around the Roman region in the period of time between the 1600s and the late 1800s were carrying for duels. <laughs> you know, you besmirch my, my honor. This is, you know, I call you out. So, uh, in the, in the, uh, uh, spirit of tradition, no pocket clip on this. It's got a nice sculpted, um, and when I say heavy, I mean relative to the rest of it, but it's still very light. It's titanium, but it's got this extended little uh, noggin knocker with a little bit of uh, flair to it. It's also something that you can hold on to and index if you're fighting with this thing uh, choked back like this. So uh, kind of uh, kind of like a any any sort of elongated cold steel knife you can you can kind of latch onto the end uh it's got s35 vn steel it's a frame lock and the pattern that is very nice and grippy on this um that's milled into the titanium handle scales it's supposed to evoke the cobbles of the um of the appian way or the roman road you know this is this is uh those are supposed to look like cobblestones. And I think that's so cool, especially if you are, if you're referencing a great civilization like Rome in your knife design. Okay. It's already assumed from the knife design that it's a bit of a weapon, but let's take it further. Uh, what else besides uh, mayhem and conquest is Rome known for? How about introducing the rest of the world to soap? How about moving water? you know, without having to carry a bucket? How about toilets? How about plumbing? How about sewers? The Romans, and I'm not just saying this because I have Roman heritage, but the Romans, you know, were way ahead, you know, kind of like the Californians today. So they just really, uh, oh, I'm sorry. That was, a, that was not me dissing Californians. That was actually a line from Taxi Driver. So excuse that. I think California is awesome. Uh, but Really, I like that this tips the hat to Rome. Rome, thank you for not only this gorgeous design, but also thank you for roads. Thank you for soap. Thank you for aqueducts and toilets and other cool stuff. Uh, I love this knife. Uh, I really want to make this knife a part of my collection. Not this one in particular. This one is Dave's, so I will leave that Dave's. Um, but that is the We Knives Roman 
uh, four inch bladed knife designed by Alessandra DeSantis, DeSantis of Hydra Designs. Follow her on Instagram. She's got a lot of really cool stuff for sure. Second knife on loan to me is from Blade Freak. You might know Blade Freak from Instagram. Check him out. He's got some cool knives. Um, this one, you know, I recently purchased a uh, uh, Chris Reeve knives Umnumzan from him, and he sent this along just to check out. And I'm so glad he did. This is the uh, Jake Hoback Knives Quayback, his real breakout model and a classic in the hard use uh, tactical slash EDC knife universe. And uh, this is a really, really great knife. And now it makes me, you know, want one. <laughs> and I, I don't mean to sound so acquisitive about it, but I, I have this in hand and I really see why people have been going crazy about this for 10 plus years. Um, this is a crew wear blade and it's that nice upswept tanto, which I find very attractive, I have to say. And then uh, it's got that acid etching in the blade. And then on the titanium side, it's not only got uh, an inlay of carbon fiber, which is nice. I love to see inlays on the lock side. People sometimes get lazy on the lock side, I think. Uh, but you can also see that cat camo pattern from the blade continues onto the titanium. And that is actually anodization, which to me shows an incredible amount of skill. Here it is. Uh, you can see his, his uh, pocket clip. Let me, there you go. Has the battle axe. I love that. Uh, and you got that jimping up at the pommel, which is nice. You got a, a deep carry insert there. I mean, a, um, a steel insert, and then not only the titanium side, but the uh, carbon fiber side are milled for weight reduction. And then you can see that anodization, uh, the camo there. <clears throat> Just a great knife. It's on bearings and uh, flips beautifully. It's nice, uh, almost four inch blade. Again, it's one of the older, bigger ones. I like that. And uh, nice jimping there. So thank you, Blade Freak. I love this thing. I am going to do a close-up video of it and do some comparisons with some other classics that I feel are kind of in its category, striders, hinderers, uh, Chris Reeve knives, that kind of thing. And, uh, and then I will get that back in the mail to you, I swear, <laughs> really quickly. So um, next up, we all know, as I mentioned before, uh, Dave loans me a lot of cool knives to check out. I was going on and on about how weird the name of this next one is. The Keen Natter uh, by Savivi. And he said, check it out. It's actually a really sweet knife. And uh, he was right. It is. That's N690 blade steel on this recurve Tanto. Now, the way I feel Tantos should be, especially uh, Americanized Tantos, is that they should have a flat ground front. And then they should have a hollow ground uh, main main blade part right there here. I'm going to get something to try and focus here. Okay. So that, uh, the straight on the blade is hollow ground and you can tell when it meets that front portion with that curve there, that means that that's a hollow grind meeting a flat grind. And man, they did a great job. You know, that's what Civivi, that's kind of what I know them for is their incredible thin grinds. That is a really nice grind on this knife. Now, I feel like when recurve Tantos first came out, it was kind of like, let's see how we can riff on the Tanto. And, uh, you know, I think Emerson had a lot to do with that, uh, but others too. And I feel like the recurve Tanto has really proven itself to be a really effective blade shape, especially when it's got a long forward portion. That's been sort of the theme of this show, the long forward portion of a Tantooid blade. So you have a nice bellied portion here that's more stout with its flat grind. And then back here you have this slicey recurve for, you know, for slipping through materials. So really an excellent blade shape and uh, great execution by Civivi as usual. Uh, and also great execution on the um, action. It's caged ceramic bearings and uh, 
on this for this N690 blade, it rockets out either using that thumb stud or this um, flipper tab. But also, here I got to switch hands here uh, with the fuller. I can spidey flick it too, which is nice. I can also spidey flick it with that thumb stud. I swear, there you go. And uh, it just feels great in hand. Something about this choil I like too, maybe because it's not perfectly round. It's not like half a, it's not a semicircle. It's more of a flat region there. Um, and it just clears that thumb stud. So I imagine sharpening it won't be an issue. Uh, great thick weave canvas micarta handle and that natural uh, tan coloration. You've got weight reduced liners for this liner lock. And then uh, a Civivi clip. I'm not crazy about that clip. However, in use I am because even though it's not recessed in there, the uh, the screw heads are flat, so it's not going to hassle your your pocket on the in the on the in and out. The Keen Nader, like many Civivis, come in a number of different uh, iterations. Uh, but if I were to buy this one for myself, I would get it just like Dave got it. That really nice sort of acid stone wash with the with the uh, really beautiful. Um, Canvas micarta. And why do I like natural canvas micarta next to gray? It reminds me of driving home to Ohio or driving through Ohio. It seems like whenever I come home, whether it's from Virginia or when I lived in New York or when I lived in Philadelphia, whenever I hit the Ohio Pennsylvania line, no matter how beautiful it was elsewhere, we would hit Ohio and it would be gray like every time. And I'd look out over the fields, which kind of look a little bit like this. Uh, this canvas micarta, natural canvas micarta, and get that steely gray sky. And I'd say, I'm home. I love it here. And by the way, Ohio is beautiful. The weather is, is it's like, it's probably one of the most temperate and lovely places ever. ever. Uh, it just so happens that it rains. Um, it rains always in is gray when I drive home. So anyway, that's my, uh, that's my little ode to Ohio. All right, next is also from Dave, and this is one that I've talked about a lot recently. Uh, this is the Elementum. Uh, I am now on board with the Elementum. I am one, you know, resistance is futile with this knife because if you don't like uh, the first 12 iterations, that 13th one is going to just really get you. And in my case, it was this one. This is the um, Damascus bladed um, marble carbon fiber button lock only model button lock to open it button lock to close it button lock to open it button lock to close it so you better like fidgeting and this one to me is just mm, mm, mm. it's really really nice so i've been talking about how um take kind of rehashing successful good selling well selling designs over and over and over in a million different iterations i always make a joke about the burker bonely quake burker the Boker Burnley Quaken that has a million different iterations. But I mean, you know, good on them. They've got a seller. Go for it. We got a money maker, Charlie. You know, let's go for it. Uh, so it was the same thing with Civivi here. And this latest version, I mean, because they have a bunch of versions of this basic knife. And it's no wonder. I mean, it's an incredibly useful all arounder. There's nothing offensive about it. There's everything useful about it with this very thinly hollow ground drop point blade. It's kind of a do everything blade. You got a straight, you got a belly, you got a swedge, you got a drop point, you got a hollow grind. I mean, what can't you do with this knife except pry? And then you could probably still pry pretty well with this anyway. Uh, this model is a larger one. Uh, the blade coming in at uh, one, two, I'm terrible at this. I get stage fright when I have to count. Uh, let's see, one, two. Three and a half inches, about probably 3.4 inch blade there with a 9CR Damascus. That's a stainless Damascus and uh, that very neutral handle. So in this version, I like everything about it. I like the two patterns next to each other. Doesn't feel too Mr. Furley to me. And, uh, you know, carbon fiber, I'm always poo-pooing, but I like this marbled, car marbled carbon fiber with the blue in there. They have one with red and I think they have one with bronze or brown. Just a great, great knife. I might consider getting it actually. And then you'll never hear me mention Elementum again. I swear, unless it's in glowing terms, you'll never hear it again. 
All right, next up, this is a loaner from Lefty EDC. By the way, guys, if you don't know uh, Dave This Old Sword Blade Reviews, definitely check him out. Great, great channel on uh, on YouTube, and then he has a supporting channel on Instagram. Super awesome. Check him out, This Old Sword Blade Reviews. Also, if you don't know Blade Freak, he's got a great Instagram um, uh, account. Go check him out. That's Blade Freak. I think it's an underscore between, but if not, just type in Blade Freak, you'll find him. And uh, this next guy, Lefty EDC, you all know Lefty EDC, uh, awesome, awesome taste and great uh, analysis of knives. And this is a loner, one of two he sent me. This is the Monterey Bay Knives, Jerry McGinnis designed sprocket. Now, Jerry McGinnis is a a knife maker whose work I've been admiring from afar. I know he's done, uh, before this, there was another collaboration that he did maybe with like CRKT. I'm sorry. I didn't look this up beforehand, but I know he's, he's dabbled. He's dipped his toes in the, uh, production collaboration, but, uh, really what he's known for is his highly coveted, gorgeously created and designed, uh, folding knives. Uh, there are a couple of guys on Instagram I follow just to look at the McGinnis knives they collect. Uh, this one, the Sprocket, I, I think he hit stride when he met Monterey Bay Knife Company because um, this is the way to bring these kind of exclusive designs to market. Go to a place like you know Monterey Bay Knives, and they will lovingly reproduce your design. And this is really really lovingly uh produced it's a titanium frame lock as you as you have as you've guessed i love that pocket clip um it is m390 blade steel you've got captured ceramic bearings and incredible action this is one of those knives if you like the design you will like this knife it feels great in hand you've got uh, here i'm going to hold it in my right hand um excellent saber grip with really nice jimping on this uh, on this thumb ramp. By the way, I like the way Monterey Bay Knives puts the signature of the maker on the spine there. And then uh, forward of the thumb ramp, you've got a, a swale you can put your thumb in. You've got a really nice swedge, and that's a recurve clip point, man. There aren't enough recurve clip points in my life, but this one... Uh, <laughs> I dig it. And and then you've got, uh, what is that? Seven lightning holes there to lighten up the titanium slab side. Uh, looks like no weight reduction pockets on the um, clip side, on the lock side. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Feels great. F feels really great in hand. And that action is just addictive. It, it actually, this one fires out of the handle and has like a little bit of recoil at the end, which uh, is pleasing to me here let me do let me see if you can gauge it oh, <laughs> just kidding let me see yeah i don't know i don't know if you can tell you probably can't but it's like firing a protec knife it comes out and it it makes your hand jump a little bit and if your second grade teacher was holding it, it would make the fat on the bottom of her arm shake you know what i'm saying all right next is also a lefty edc loner and it's also a beautiful knife from Monterey Bay Knives. This one is a Ray Laconico design, and it is the Slayback. And it's the liner locking, titanium liner lock, or I'm sorry, yeah, liner locking version of the Slayback, which was a double detent sort of slip joint knife, non-locking knife. I can't call it a double detent and then call it a slip joint, but you know what I mean. Um, and this is a flipper. <laughs> Oh my God. I, I, I think that this is a stunningly gorgeous design and I am just pleased as punch that it is below my preferred size because then I would have to go buy this knife. That blade shape, that blade shape just had me at hello. And I just think it's really beautiful. It's like a broke back sax kind of, but Warren Cliffy. I love the way that this, uh, the spine, uh, reaches upward, hits a peak, and then drops down. But instead of going straight, it's got this nice curve. It's sort of mm, claw-like, bat wing-like. And then you've got this really nice straight. This is ZDP 189. That's uh, that's a, um, what do you call it? A, uh, oh, mm, mm, mm. you know, 
the three pieces of steel when they're put together. Uh, and then you can see the line right here where the two steels meet. A San Mai. Sorry, that's a San Mai steel there. You can see the line where the two meet. That gorgeous swedge. Wonderful action. Uh, this is M390 as well. And oh, I, I mean, <laughs> I mean, titanium as well on the handle. You got the sculpted titanium clip. This is a really cool knife. So if you like knives in the three inch, that's a three inch blade knife. If you, if if your main carry is like a three inch, you have to get this knife. I mean, this this is really, really, really nice. And then look at the spine of the handle here. From the peak of the blade here where the swedge begins to the very pommel you can see one long arching uh one long arching line there and and then the bottom line from the from the pommel all the way down the handle to the blade is one singular straight line so you're really getting a lot of the sway back uh utility here um this the this Sometimes a fully curved handle, like when the sway back, when the dorsal region or the dorsal line mimics the pectoral line, to me it feels weird. But this you have a straight and then you have the curve on the top. And to me that remedies that whole thing while still maintaining the sway back spirit, if you will. Uh, this feels really great in hand, by the way. Um, when you put your thumb up here right behind the swedge and push downward, it counteracts that upward sweep and it gives you just a really perfect grip on this and then a lot of weight towards the tip. And that's where you're going to be using this knife a lot is with that, that sort of tip, uh, tip cut, pull cut kind of thing. All right. The last knife I'm showing you is, uh, these are all awesome, but this is the creme de la creme. And so for that, I'm going to take a slight sip of water there. This thing uh, I have not experienced, I've seen from afar and have been curious about, but having it in hand has made it. Now I get the hype, having it and being able to really have it in hand. Pictures do a great, great job for knives and getting you interested and excited about knives. But sometimes only having it in hand will sell it for me. And that's, that's what it is here with this. This is the Oz Roosevelt. And uh, man, this is a highly, highly coveted, knife out there uh, made by Daniel Osborne of Oz Knives in Indiana. Everything is done in-house. This is this is number 209. And I believe here, I have a birth card here. Uh, this is the uh, golf putter. I here, I'm going to, you see that I have a card, but I'll read it to you. This is the golf putter pattern, which is cool as hell. Uh, this is 61 Rockwell Zephanet blade, and uh, let's see, milling as a all tie construction. This is knife number two hundred nine, and again, it's called the Roosevelt. And man alive, I love this knife, and I see what what the big the big hubbub is, what the brouhaha, what the big what the what the skinny is, what the I love this thing. This is another double finger choil knife. This one has sort of a, not a 50-50 choil situation, but maybe a 75-25 uh, choil situation. So you're right up on that cutting edge without losing any cutting edge. The cutting edge comes nearly to the, to the titanium. So just, just beautifully designed. Thin blade, you got a nice swedge on top, uh, very good jimping, and then fully flat ground so thin back here i mean this thing reminds me a little bit of my steingraber performance knives shark which is a very thin thin knife thin behind the edge okay so this one opens up really nicely slowly slow roll you can get your thumb in there flick it out but i think this thing accelerates excels with this with the thumb i mean with the uh, spidey flick Ah, uh, so I'm uh, really liking this knife. Um, I will have it again. This is from Jake of Bearded Gear. Jake, thank you so much for entrusting this to me. It's greatly appreciated. Uh, I know that this is a rare knife and I think one of your prized knives for sure. I know Stasa23 
has mentioned before that this is his absolute favorite knife in his collection. By the way, look at that. That pocket clip is so understated and yet so nice. It's one single angle sculpted. Mm, so nice. I haven't actually pocketed this. Uh, I will just for around the house use, but not even in the kitchen because in the kitchen is where I scrape up the clips because I lean against the counter and stuff. So worry not, Jake. I will take good care of this. But wow, I am so impressed by this knife, the Roosevelt. I think I got to get me one. Yeah. They're not easy to come by, so uh, keep your eyes peeled. I think you have to go to the Oz Machinery. Is that what it's called, Oz Machine? Uh, just, just look up Oz Knives on... Uh, uh yeah oz knife company or uh, i'm sorry oz machine company sorry i had to i had to glance at the uh at the website there look up oz machine company on instagram or just look at them uh, on on uh, the web and you'll be able to find them and get on a list so you can get into the lotto so you can win this or win the opportunity to buy the knife something like that but just outstanding and very impressive so let me just run through this lineup real quick from Dave, this old sword blade reviews. I have the Wee Roman. Uh, from Blade Freak, I have the Hoback Quayback. From Dave again, I have the Keen Natter. Also from Dave, I have the Civivi Elementum. This knife has changed my mind about the Elementum. From Lefty EDC, we have the Monterey Bay Knives Sprocket, designed by Jerry McGinnis. And also from Lefty EDC, we have the Monterey Bay Knives. Uh, Slayback designed and made uh, by uh, Laconico, Ray Laconico. And then right here we have the Oz Knives uh, Roosevelt made by Oz Machine Company and uh, made by uh, Daniel Osborne. So definitely uh, very, very blessed to have people who trust me out there and loan me these outstanding knives because for many of them, since I am not uh, buying, you know, buying up huge amounts of knives, many of them I wouldn't have a chance to experience without these generous uh, generous souls. So Dave, Jake, and Lefty, thank you so much. I appreciate it greatly, and uh, I will take good care of these knives until I video them and send them back to you. So there you have it. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Be sure to check us out on Sunday for, a knife, uh, for another great knife maker interview. It will be... Uh, uh, Ron Steele Jr. this time. Uh, also check out um, next Thursday night, Thursday Night Knives. We do the knife giveaway next week, so check that out. And then also there's Instagram. And if you can't listen to all of this wonderful, wonderful talk right here on YouTube uh, or wherever you're watching this, be sure that you go to Apple Podcasts, Google, iHeart, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, and a whole host of other podcast apps uh, which have this. So you can listen while you're mowing the lawn or cutting up onions or changing diapers, whatever it happens to be. No, 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 no. Actually, talk to your child if you're changing diapers. Don't listen to me. All right. So for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I am Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco saying, until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Mm -hmm.